Hello everyone, my name is Jeffrey Way. Welcome to NetTuts. In this video quick tip, I'm going to teach you how to make cross-domain AJAX requests using jQuery and taking advantage of YQL. So as you know, just standard um, the load.load .load method in jQuery, you're not going to be able to uh, make cross-domain requests. You can load a local page, but if you want to load Google, you can't do that. So we're going to take advantage of YQL, which is like an API for APIs, and take advantage of that. So let's go and you'll see this is what we're going to start out with. Uh, just a sample layout. If I go into TextMate and I load the page, you can see we have a form, an input where the user can type in a URL. When they click on the button, we will grab that URL and load it using YQL. Okay, so we got a lot to cover. First thing is when the form is submitted, run a function. We're being generic here, just assuming there's only one form. And first, we're going to get the whatever the user types in. So var path is going to be equal to get to that input dot val. So if they type in net touch, path will be equal to net touch. The next step is we have to um, we have to call our function. So we're going to call this request cross domain. And we haven't created this yet. I'm just making this up as we go. And we're going to pass in the path or whatever the user types in. And then we're also going to pass in a callback function when that completes. Now this callback function should be able to accept a uh, results or whatever you want to call it that will contain whatever is returned from that cross-domain AJAX request. And whatever is returned, we're going to get container.html is results. So when it's returned, it's going to be the contents of whatever page we load. We take this out, empty anything that's in it, and load whatever is returned. Pretty simple, right? And then finally, because we are submitting a form, let's return false to disable the default action. The next step is we need to go into our JavaScript file. Note that I am importing jQuery 1.4 as well as this new file. And you can see, uh, let's go ahead and create that function. So we called it function cross, or I'm sorry, request cross domain, right? And it accepts the path and the callback function. Okay, good deal. So let's get started. Uh, first, they have to import, uh, import, they have to send in a site to this function. So if one does not exist, uh, let's go ahead and call an alert. No site was passed or throw an error maybe. And let's return false because that is required. The next step is uh, create this variable YQL. And you can see YQL allows us some a lot of power. So we can do something like select star, select all from HTML, where the URL equals google.com. Let's test that. And you can see that returns the contents of the page. Uh, in this example where we actually want to load an actual page, XML would be the better way to return it. Because JSON will return it, you can see where everything is separated. You see div, a, that's really hard to work with. So we will return it as XML. And now we have this REST query that we can work with. However, we can't just copy and paste this because we need to set where URL equals whatever the user types in, right? So you can see we have this structure. We call the Yahoo, the Yahoo API where the query equals, and then this part right here is whatever we type in, and then we set the format equal to XML. So for the sake of expediency, I'm just going to copy this in and explain it to you. So var YQL equals, and we reference YQL, where the query equals, and uh, we want to make sure, because we're sending it through a URL, we encode URI in component, and we do select all from HTML, where the URL equals whatever is passed in, or whatever the user types into that text box. And then finally, I'm calling format is XML, and the callback is question mark, and we do that so that we can take advantage of this with uh, jQuery.getJSON, making a JSONP call. So now we'll do jQuery.getJSON, and we're going to get that YQL, and we're going to run data. Okay, so data is going to contain whatever is returned from that call. In this case, pretty much the contents right here. So, but it's not going to be represented by default as data. It's actually data.results here. Zero, and you can use Firebug to uh, to check out exactly how to target what you need. So the first thing we need to do is it's going to load the whole page, including any scripts and things like that, which is very dangerous. You want to be careful. So uh, for this example, we're just going to go and strip out any script tags or anything within script tags. So we will do first. Let's make sure that something was returned. We could have loaded a fake page. So if data.results 
zero. Uh, if that, then we know we have something to work with, and we're going to overwrite data. And it's going to be data equals results, data dot results, zero. And we're going to use uh, regular expressions, and we're going to replace script tags. So give me just a minute to figure this out. Script. And uh, they could do type, or they could do source. So we want to say get script, and then uh, anything that is not a closing bracket. And when, when inside of this, uh, the little caret means anything that's not a bracket. So as many characters as you want there, so zero or more. And then uh, we want to make sure that there could be spaces between the closing tag, right? So let's add the closing tag. And then we will say, listen for anything that's a space or anything that's not a space. And um, I know this is confusing, and we can talk more in the comments. So listen for zero or more spaces or anything that's not a space, line breaks, or anything like that. Or that could be optional. They could close their script tag immediately. And then finally, we want to just close out the script tag. And let's make sure we escape that. And that should be good. So find any script tags, uh, any contents with them then in them, and make sure we replace that with nothing. All right. Now let's do if type of callback equals function, we want to make sure that uh, this exists and it is a function, then call it. And we want to make sure that we call the user's function, but when we call it, let's also pass data in. That way they can work with whatever is returned, right? Uh, we can do here, so what if data.result0 uh, is null or undefined? Uh, in that case, we need to give the user some feedback, so let's do, uh, why don't we throw an error in this case? Nothing returned, nothing, nothing returned from GetJSON. And that should do it. So let's test this out. Let's refresh the page, and I'm going to load google.com, make Ajax request, and now you can see it loaded the page for us. Let's try another one net.touchplus.com. Note this is only for uh, cross-domain requests. If you're doing a local request, you don't want to do this. But you can see that we've completely loaded this page. Now the last thing I want to do is load a fake page. So let's just add a bunch of things so that an error will be thrown. And you can see nothing uh, nothing has responded. And I'm sorry I have console disabled. Let's try that again. Make cross-domain requests, and you see nothing returned. So that's the advantage of throwing your own errors. Is uh, it's a much easier way to debug. But we can load any page we want, fox.com, because of course you would want to load fox.com, and uh, you can see what is loaded. So uh, you need to be very careful with this, and we can talk more in the comments. But just remember, we're taking advantage of YQL. Uh, so we call the API, we pass in our query. And then we make a get JSON request with that. We strip out any script tags, and then we call the user's function. So this is represented by this. Okay. Uh, if you are curious and you want to learn more about YQL, check out an API for the web. Just search for this on NetTouch, and I will also include a link for it. And if you're more of a visual learner, we also have a video tutorial of this uh, an API for the web for our Plus members. So check that out as well. I'm Jeffrey Way, and I'll see you in the next video quick tip. Bye.